In this video, I'll show you how to install the KW V3 coilovers on your Mazda X8. A big thanks goes to KW for supporting this video. If you haven't checked them out yet, they make one of the best coilovers for street and track use on the market. They are rust proof, allow you to adjust rebound, compression and have extra oil reservoirs for additional cooling and oil capacity. I'll leave the link to the ones I'll install in the description. In the V3 kit, you'll get the two front coilovers, two rear coilovers, dampers and springs won't be pre-assembled, and finally, the KW toolkit. Well, you'll get some practical instructions, stickers, a small purple key to release the lower perch, and finally, the key to lower the height. Before we start the install, let's have a look at the car's stock height so that we can compare it with a lowered one later on. Since in my country, you are required to get a mechanics installation certificate in order to register the coilovers, I decided to bring my car to Sunside Tuning, a KW certified dealer and installer. I'll leave a link to their website and project in the description. First up, we'll measure the stock height from ground to fender and from central hub to fender. And these are the measurement results. Next, it's time to raise the car or jack it up and put it on jack stands if you're doing it at home. Next up, release the nuts and take out all four wheels. And this is my stock coilover. Very rusty and torn. It's a good thing I'm replacing it. Now go inside the trunk and release the carpet on the side by removing all the plastic bolts and clips. When done, you'll see the top part of your rear coilovers. Remove the two bolts on the side of the golden plate and the two ones in the middle. When done, take off the golden plate from the strut mount. Next, remove the two remaining lower nuts. Do this on both sides. And the rear part is done. In the front, remove the bolts holding your strut bar in place and if you have the stock set up, remove the three nuts holding the strut brace. When done, take out the strut bar so that the bolts are nice and free. Now it's time to use some WD-40 or equivalent on the following things starting from the front. The lower bolt of the headlight leveling arm and both sides of the lower coilover bolt. With that done, take two wrenches and release the lower bolt on the leveling arm and take it out. This way, we won't risk damaging it during the installation. When out, bolt it back on the arm so you won't lose it. Spray the bottom part of the rear leveling arm and the lower bolt holding the bottom of the coilover in place. Now unscrew the lower bolt of the rear leveling arm, release it and put the bolt back up so you won't lose it. Next, it's time to release the bolt holding the front brake lines and remove it, so we won't damage the brake lines. Do the same for the bolt holding the front ABS lines and the bolt holding the rear ABS lines. Next up, shower the front lower bolt holding the coilover with some WD-40 or similar products and then place your impa gun on one side of the bolt and a wrench on the other side. Release the bolt and take it out. Next up, before removing these two bolts, spray them with some WD-40 and then release them with your ratchet or breaker bar and take them out. If you're doing this on your driveway with a ratchet, it helps to jack up a bit the bottom front nut circled in red. It makes the removal of these three bolts much easier. When you finish removing them, take the jack away. When done, it's time to push down the arm. You can have someone holding it down or use our method. Next, use a pry bar to pry out the two sides of the front A-arm. With that done, grab the old suspension, wiggle it a bit and take it out. To finish, zip tie the two sides of the A-arm so it doesn't drop. Repeat the same process on the other side of the front suspension. Next up, release the bottom bolt holding the rear suspension and take it out. Use your pry bar to pry out the lower part of the coilover. Just like that. Next, it's time to release the last bolt holding the rear top part of the suspension, which is this one right here. Alright, so for the next step, you can do it in two ways. The first way is easier if you're doing it at home. All you have to do is remove these two bolts, circled in red, holding the two upper arms and then take the bolts out. When done, you can open the arms and get out the suspension. But we chose to do it another way. We sprayed some key spots, sprayed the bolts that will get removed, released the nut with a torque gun and took it out. We sprayed it again, then we used a ball joint splitter to safely release the rear lower lateral arm. With that done, it was time to wiggle out the rear suspension. Now we can finally have a closer look at my front suspension. 
which doesn't seem to be looking that bad, but it surely shows its age. If we take a look at my rear one, we can immediately see that it's being eaten away by rust. Changing the suspension on your RX-8 after 14 years should be a must. Alright, so now let's have a look at the new coilover specs. We are looking at the first left picture for our front and rear coilovers as that's the V3 model I have. The A indicates the lowest and highest lowering points of the coilovers. So if we have a look at the sheet, if you keep the lower part of the A to zero, this means that the coilovers are on the lowest setting which is minus 6 centimeters. If you raise the perch towards the top of the A-line, you're gonna raise the height and you can go to a maximum of 6 centimeters, which is basically stock ride height. The same goes for the rear. When the perch is at the bottom of the A, it means it's lowered to the max, which the sheet says it's 3 centimeters. You can raise the rear to a maximum of 3 centimeters to make it higher. Just remember, if you choose to slam your car to the lowest setting, it might not be covered by the KW warranty. So we've decided to lower the front by 2 cm and also the rear by 2 cm. Don't worry, the car will go lower, this setting is just temporary. Next up, if you open the KW toolbox, you'll find this purple Allen key and you're gonna gently use it to release the perch on the rear coilovers. When done, rotate the perch to the lowest setting. Do the same for the other rear one. To give you an idea, the lower picture shows you that the perch is at the bottom where the thread starts and that's our point zero, the lowest point you can have your coilovers. The photo on the top shows you where point zero is and the perch has been raised by 2 cm. This means that the car will be lower by 4 cm. We've raised the rear coilovers by 1 cm, so now it's time to pick a bottom reference point and check that the distance is exactly the same on both rear coilovers. With that done, it's time to lock the perch in place. Now it's time for the front ones. Firstly, remove the springs to access the thread. When done, unlock and rotate the perch to the bottom of the thread. Make sure that the bottom of the perch is at the beginning of the thread and that's our starting point. Pick a bottom reference point and measure the distance when the perch is in position 0. Now we're gonna raise the height by 4 cm. So if the initial distance from the bottom reference point was 20.4 cm with the perch raised, it has to be 24.4 cm. With this done, you can lock the perch in place. Next, reassemble the coilover the same way we took it apart. Next up, repeat the same process on the other front coilover and make sure that the distance from the bottom reference point and the bottom of the perch is the same on both coilovers. If it is, lock the perch in place and reassemble the coilover. The rear coilovers are clearly marked. R is for the right one and L is for the left one. The front ones, on the other hand, are identical, so there is no left or right, it's the same. Use a spring compressor and tighten it on the old rear spring using your ratchet. This will prevent the spring from shooting off when you unbolt the coilover. When you can move the damper around without the spring pressing on it, you can stop tightening the spring. Next, use an Allen key and a ratchet with a hole in the middle to release the top nut and take it off. Now take off the big top assembly and put it on the side. Take out the remaining parts and put it on the side. Take your rear coilover and slide on the small spring with the purple part facing up. Next, slide the big spring with the small part facing down. Remove the top bolt, the top washer, metal sleeve and bottom washer. Now it's time to remove some rust from the old suspension mount. With that done, here's a quick comparison between the stock and KW dampers. We can see that the KW ones are almost twice as thick. Next up, put on the KW bottom washer, the KW metal sleeve, the old rubber bushing with the flat part facing down. Now position in place the top mount. Next, position the old bushing that is flat on both sides. Hold down the mount with one hand and with the other insert the top KW washer and the top nut. With that done, it's time to tighten the nut until it's nice and snug. Repeat the same process for the remaining rear suspension. Just remember to use the old left with the new left and the old right with the new right. Time to work on the front ones. Firstly, we spray some WD-40 on the top nut and clean the thread. Compress the spring with our clamps. Release the top bolt with your ratchet. 
It is recommended to do it in combination with an Allen key though. When done, take out the nut. And then take out the whole upper assembly. Remove the old rubber cover from the black metal bracket. Remove the nut from the new coilover. Take off the purple plate. After that, the top washer, springs, metal sleeve and bottom washer. Next, put on the springs with a smaller spring facing the bottom. Next, put on the washer. The left bushing is the bottom one and the right one is the top one. So now position the old bottom one in place. Put on the KW metal sleeve. After that, the purple plate and then the black OEM bracket. While holding down the bracket, insert the old top OEM bushing. Then the washer and tighten the nut on top of it until it's nice and snug. To finish, put back the plastic sheet. Next up, clean the bottom part where the coilovers are attached. Lift up the A-arm a bit and carefully insert the front coilover. The reservoir at the bottom of the coilover must be facing towards the front bumper. With the lower part of the coilover positioned on the bracket, it's time to put in the two parts of the A-arm. Since mine was quite stubborn, we used a copper hammer so we don't damage anything while hammering it in place. Next, put some grease on the bolt to prevent it from rusting or seizing. Insert it in the A-arm and tighten it with a ratchet, up to 70 foot-pounds. Repeat the same process for the bolt on the other side. Put some grease on the lower bolt and then insert it. Screw on the nut on the other side and tighten them down to 80 foot-pounds. Screw back the brake line bolt and the front ABS bolt holding the line. Next, insert the rear coilover in place and the bottom reservoir must be facing the rear bumper. Once in place, insert the bottom bolt and tighten it with a ratchet or impact gun up to 80 foot pound. Next, insert the upper bolt that's on the bottom side of the bracket and tighten it with a ratchet. We can see that the rear ABS bracket is rubbing against the bottle, so to fix this, simply bend it with your hands to make it flatter and you'll solve the clearance issue. Put in the bolt and secure the ABS line in place with your ratchet. Time to reinstall the lower arm. Put on the nut and bolt it in place so it's nice and snug. Next up, it's time to reconnect all four leveling arms and tighten the bolts with your ratchet and wrench. Insert the rear strut bar if you have one or simply screw the nuts on the bottom bolts. Reinstall the golden plate and screw the two big bolts in the middle and the two nuts on the sides. With that done, tighten everything down with your wrench. KW provides a special protection for the front ABS lines as they will rub against the bottle. So install the plastic protection on the part of the ABS line that's rubbing against the bottle. Repeat the same process on the other side of the car. Now it's time to finally put the car back on the ground. Put back the front strut tower, insert the nuts and tighten them down with your ratchet and extension. And the coilover install is completed. Now it's time to go for a test drive and see how the car feels. The car drives and feels amazing, but aesthetically I can get a little bit lower. With that done, it's time to retake the measures now that the ride height is lower. We're doing this to see if the car height in the front matches on both sides and also on the rear. And there you have it, the KW V3 coilovers are now successfully installed and drastically improved the way my RX-8 handles. Aesthetically, you can see that the ride has been lowered, it's not that dramatic, I might go 2 more centimeters down in the summer, but for now and for the future mods that await the car, it's just fine. To get my final setup, I have to do a couple of track days to get the perfect feel and see what setting works best. With that said, the coilovers I used will be linked in the description along with all the tools that you'll need for this install. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe and check out more RX-8 videos on my channel.